Hey everybody, Mike here with EverythingAboutConcrete.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how we pour a simple concrete floor inside a frost wall or inside a foundation. Now this is a 4 inch thick concrete floor we're pouring here and we're using a 3000 PSI mix with fiber mesh reinforcement. So hey, if you guys don't know me, my name is Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors Incorporated. This channel is all about pouring concrete, finishing concrete, how to do stamp concrete, pretty much everything to do with concrete. So if you like that kind of stuff, go ahead down there and hit subscribe now. And hit the little bell notification while you're at it so you'll be updated whenever I put out a new video. So what we're doing was, is this, this job here has got a frost wall around it. We live in Maine, so we get, a, we get some pretty bad winters up here. So most of the floors we do have a frost wall and we pour floors right inside the frost wall. So this particular job has a two inch styrofoam sub base under it also and that helps keep the frost from getting down through the floor but this is going to be a camp on a lake and you can't really see the lake there but the lake is off to the left so this is just getting a new concrete floor inside this camp so what we're doing here is we're pouring this is a 10 yard concrete floor we're pouring out the concrete getting it level with the top of that wall and uh, I'm going to show you the methods we use to get the concrete floor poured both loaded and uh, that way if, you, if you're thinking of doing this yourself at least you know what it's going to take and the kind of manpower you might need or woman power so I'm over there I'm over there magging the edge even with the top of the wall Darren's running the chute and the girls are kind of spreading out the concrete for us and as we're spreading the concrete we're trying to we're trying to get it by eye as level as we can with the top of that foundation wall and we're, we're probably pouring about a, a five or a six inch slump and the, what the slump is is how wet or how dry the concrete is and you know we like to pour it so it's at least workable so we're not killing ourselves but also so it's not too wet so we're not damaging the concrete I always order a when I order the concrete mix from the dispatcher, I always order a water reducer in the mix also. And what this water reducer does is it allows us to pour a little bit looser slump, a little bit wetter slump, without adding water. So we're not damaging the mix. Uh, anybody can order that, no matter where you are. All the concrete plants have this water reducer agent. It just, it just costs a few bucks more per yard. But in the long run, it's really worth it. As you can see, Darren's filling up like a, a very small chimney pad there. He held up the rebar and got the, got the concrete under it, then set the rebar back down in. And before that, we filled like a, a haunched area in the floor. I don't know if you noticed that, but we call a thickened area in a floor a haunch. I think some of you guys call it a grade beam. But let me know down there in the comments what you guys call those thickened areas in the floor. So I'm getting ready to shoot a wet pad. We wet screed everything. We kick screed stuff. A lot of times on bigger floors, we'll use a we'll use a laser screed. You know, you've probably seen that in some of my other videos. This one, we're just gonna hand screed it, kick screed it. So I'm making what's called a wet pad there. Now I've got my laser set to the same height as the top of that concrete wall, and that pad I'm magging right there in the middle is gonna be exactly the same height as the top of the wall. You'll see in a few minutes how we how we screed a pad across that. We like to get quite a bit of the floor poured out first before we start screeding. Now, if if you're not as experienced, maybe you just want to pour out a little bit, like like that first section is maybe 12 by 14. Pour out that, get it screeded, and then pour out another section. But since we do this stuff every day, you know, we like to get quite a bit poured out before we start screeding it. Because we know it's not going to take us that long to get it pulled down. We're going to get through this area with the pipes. That's probably, you know, kitchen, bathroom, something like that. Get all the concrete we need around there. We like magging our edges too, like I'm doing right there, getting the edges nice and smooth. We'll use that pad around the edge to go by as well when we screed. 
It also, you know, gets all the rocks pushed down, gets the cream pulled up to the top. And when you go to finish this thing, when you go to trial it, it just makes it easier to trial if those edges are all have all been magged really nice. Definitely makes it easier to pour a floor like this when you've got, you know, enough power, enough manpower, enough women power to help you. Three people is pretty much the minimum. I mean, two really experienced person could do this. But if, but if you're not really experienced, then I'd have at least three, if not four, like we have here. You don't want to take too long to get something like this poured, you know. You, you want to get it poured and... This probably took us total maybe 35, 40 minutes to do. I'd say you don't want to take much longer than an hour, an hour and a half to get something like this poured. And we're just waiting for the truck driver there to get that chute rinsed off. Get him pulled ahead a little bit. And we're going to set him over. Get just a little bit more poured out, I think, before we start straight edging this. So I'm getting all my pads magged around those pipes, checking it with a laser, make sure everything's good and level. We like to get all our floors as perfect as we can as far as being level. You know, I mean, I mean there's always going to be a, a margin of error, whether it's with the laser or a human factor, but I would say 99 to almost 100% of our floors are all within an eighth of an inch, you know, after we're done, up or down. So how many of you guys out there pour floors and do it every day? Let me know down in the comments if you do this stuff every day. And if you don't, if you're just learning and you want to do this as a business, let me know that too so I can gear some videos toward, you know, how to start your own business, how to do this for a living, things like that. I've been doing this 39 years now. I started out pouring concrete when I was about 16 years old. You know, and I worked for somebody then. I worked for more of a commercial concrete contractor. We did really big floors. I did it all through high school. And then about a year after high school, I went to a, started going to a tech college. Didn't really know what I wanted to do in college. And I, and I still work for that guy in the summer. And then about a year after going to that tech college, decided, you know, that's not what I wanted to do. And I started my own business at about the age of 20. So I've been in business for myself for just about 35 years, starting out as a, a very young adult, not knowing what I was doing, learning everything as I went, making all kinds of mistakes. So if, if that's something you guys want to do, if you want to, you know, start your own business doing this, if you're working for somebody else, thinking about getting in there on your own, well, I might be able to help you with that. But just let me know down in the comments. And I could maybe start making a few videos about how to start your own business, what you need to do, things you need to start with, stuff like that. So as you can see, Darren just screeded around all those pipes by himself using a short screed. Kind of kick, kick screeding as he goes filling in his footprints and I'm magging, still magging edges over there we're going to get ready to pull that bigger section down with a 14 foot screed and you can see how we're going to screed that the two girls there this is their first summer doing this one's my daughter, the one in black is my daughter the other one's her best friend they're both in college so this is a kind of a summer job for them but they're learning really good. They're they're really helpful. They're you know they're making our jobs easier every day. The more they learn, so it's it's been a big help having some extra hands around this summer. All right, so we're getting ready. Darren's getting that all screeded around that pipe. Getting that pad all screeded off for us. And now we're going to get ready to kick screed that bed. Kick screeding, like, see how Darren's doing, how he's kind of kicking as he's screeding, he's not stopping. That has a little bit of a learning curve to it. It's definitely easier to learn with a small straight edge like that. 
but that's just the way we was taught that's the way I was taught when I was young so that's just how we screed a lot of our floors now and for us I mean this we're pretty fast doing it so whether we kick screed or use a laser screed you know we can do them both at, at about the same same speed so it doesn't really matter to us which one we do on the bigger floors you know, if we have a 20 or a 30 or 40 or 50 yard floor, we'll pull out the laser screed. But for something like this, it's just as fast for us just to kick screed. Especially if you get a couple good rakers there, or puddlers. You can see how Darren's just moving right along. Filling in his footprints as he goes. So how many of you guys kick screed like that? You know, let me know in the comments. That's, uh, I don't think that's taught as much as it used to be years ago, now that the invention of the laser screeds, because when I started out, they, they didn't have laser screeds. Definitely having something to screed off from, like the top of that wall, makes it easier, too. So there, we're making our wet pad. Now we can both get on what we call the outside of the pad. Finish off that bay. Cut drivers over there washing off our tools. That's pretty nice of them. It's only going to take, he can put ten and a half yards on that truck. So it's only going to take that one truck to do this floor. We have mostly rear end dump truck, uh, concrete trucks too. Where we're from, we don't have too, too many front dumps, so we we have to pour mostly with these rear dumps. I know a lot of you other guys have front dumps, and that does make it easier having a front dump when you have a good driver with that truck. These companies we use, they have a lot of good drivers. They just don't, they don't invest in buying the front dump trucks for some reason. Right? Probably just because they're too expensive to buy. You see Darren over there doing finishing off that one bay by himself. I sped the video up a little bit so it's in two speed. If you're wondering, you know, if it looks like we're working a little fast. I didn't want to extend the video out too too long. So I sped the whole thing up to two speed for you guys. We're going to get most of that last piece poured out. We'll leave a little bit that's not poured. Just in case we're high, we can pull it into that little empty piece. We don't have to pull it out over the edge. We'll get that last bay poured down, and we'll get, get this thing bolt floated. When we pour on styrofoam like this, this, this poly under the styrofoam tube for a vapor barrier, you know, we'll get some bleed water coming up through the concrete because none of the water in the mix can sink down into the dirt so you, we do get some bleed water and you know we usually got to let that bleed water dry up before we start finishing you don't want to finish or trowel that bleed water into the surface that'll just weaken it so we do have to deal with that quite a bit pouring every day where we pour because you know most of the floors we pour either have the poly vapor barrier under them or they have the styrofoam in the vapor barrier under them. There's not many floors we pour that are just right on dirt. Years ago it was like that, but now everybody's using the vapor barriers, they're using the styrofoam. It's just the way it is these days. The water reducer we use in the mix helps with that. It, it lessens the bleed water, but we still get some. Sometimes we'll even it doesn't even dry up enough. We have to squeegee it into a pile of water and then we have to pick it up put it in a bucket or if on something like this we could squeegee it right over the edge but we definitely got to get rid of that water before you trowel if you guys are wanting to learn how to pour concrete I do have a course down in the description below that teaches you how to pour a concrete slab it I got 
all the things you need about forming the slab, getting it ready, and then pouring the slab, and then there's even a section in there on power troweling. So uh, if you guys are wanting to learn how to do this stuff, there is a course down there in the description you could buy. And it'll help teach you everything you need to know. And there's also a course down there on how to fix foundation cracks. I mean, if you guys are looking to get in business for yourself, that's another good business too, is about how to fix cracks and foundations. And then we also do, you know, we, we all I did was concrete floors for years, and then we picked up on doing epoxy also, so that's another good way to earn a lot of money is, is learning how to do epoxy floors over the concrete floors that you pour because there's a lot of people out there that want to epoxy their garages so I get a course down there too that will teach you all about how to do epoxy floors and you can make really good money doing epoxy so if you're looking to make some extra income it's, those courses would definitely be worth the money for you also I mean if you guys aren't following me on Instagram you can go down there Instagram and Facebook and Twitter I'm, I'm always putting up other content extra content on those social media channels and you can go down there in the description and follow me on that stuff too I'd go check that out all right so we're just getting finished up here we don't like making a mess so we just pour a little bit in there at a time make sure we don't get too much uh, as long as we're not holding up that driver too too long the dispatcher is not going to get too upset with us. Generally, you know, they'll give you about seven or eight minutes per yard. So that, I mean, 10 yards, that would give us a good hour to pour this floor. You know, being where we do it every day, they, they never really give us any trouble about how long we keep a truck. We don't generally keep them very long. But if, if you don't do this every day and you're quite slow, you know, they could charge you extra for taking too long to pour a floor like this. I would just keep that in mind. That's why you're going to want to have enough people there to help you get this thing poured. We'll get this thing finished up here and, and get him out of here so he can get back and get to another job. just need a little bit more so we're from Maine like I said we you know we live in Maine we get a lot of cold weather here come the end of November you know so December January February are pretty cold up here March it starts warming back up but we still get some snow in March so there's three or four months where the outside stuff like this pretty much comes to a to an end and we just have to pour stuff that's inside that's another reason why it's good doing you know a few other things like crack repair or epoxy floors you can do that stuff all through the winter inside but pouring outside in the winter when it's cold just isn't very fun you know those trucks will even freeze up we've had trucks show up on the job when it's 10 below or even even 15 or 20 degrees Fahrenheit those trucks show up and they'll freeze up the water freezes in them the hoses freeze and you're trying to unthaw them and that's just not not very fun all right we just need a couple more scoops there then then this is going to be done T is going to come back and she's going to start bull floating Bull floating is not, not too hard to learn. You just got to make sure that you keep that front edge tipped up when you push it out. And then the back edge is tipped up when you pull it back. And having a bull float with the rounded edges like that makes it nice. It, it doesn't really leave very many lines. Which, you know, you might be saying, well, what's the big deal about lines? Well, it's not that big a deal if you know what you're doing when you go into power trial. But the smaller those lines are, the, the less deep they are, the easier it is to power trowel. So we like keeping our lines really, 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 really narrow like that. Really shallow. So those rounded bull floats are really nice. 
I got, you know, down in the description, guys, there's also links for all these tools. If you guys are looking at maybe using the same tools we do, straight edges, bull floats, come alongs, you know, mag floats, all that kind of stuff. There's all links down there in the description if you guys want to check them out. We use all Marshalltown stuff for tools. You know, Marshalltown's one of the bigger tool companies out there. And they also gave me a special promotion. So if you guys use the, the coupon code EAC, when you go to the Marshalltown website and you go to check out if you're going to buy some tools, there's a place to put a coupon code in there. So if you put the letters EAC in there, they're going to give you 10% off anything you buy. And you'll also get free shipping with that too. So that's a big deal. Sometimes shipping charges can just make it not worth buying online, but you get free shipping through Marshalltown. You can see how easy that bull float is to use. You just twist the handles, it tips it one way, and you twist the handles the other way, it, it tips it back. The T is doing a good job bull floating there. I'm just magging the edges. When you pick that bull float up, it leaves a little line. So I'm just magging in behind that bull float and smoothing that line out. That's about it guys. That's how you pour, you know, a simple 10 yard concrete floor for a house. And the one that matches the top of the wall inside a frost wall like this. It's pretty similar to pouring a concrete slab, you know, other than the, the forms, the outside edges aren't wood, they're just concrete. 4 inch floor, 3000 PSI with fiber mesh reinforcement. And uh, that, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.